Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here, and as promised, I'm going to talk about the Epson SureColor P5000 and the Canon IPF Pro 2000 and why I have chosen the Pro 2000 as my next printer here for this room. I will have to do some rearranging and I will have to say goodbye to a couple of my printers as they simply are taking up too much room and that room is deserved for that whatever printer it is in this case I think it's going to be the Pro 2000 and I'll tell you why in a minute now I did set up a Facebook group dedicated to printing I did not realize that I basically had an open Facebook page and of course that attracted all sorts of unwanted traffic so now that is up and I put the link again on my home page picture of my printing room on the lower right and you will be able to see it by the little logo thank you once again I've already had a lot of comments and people have been interacting with me so that's going to be a lot of fun when I am not answering questions on the YouTube comment section I'll be checking out my Facebook group and interacting with you guys as much as I possibly can so again thank you so much for the explanation as to why I was getting all of this unwanted traffic it just did not hit me all right so let's talk about these two printers I just recently saw a video shootout basically it wasn't from Canon it wasn't from Epson but it was a comparison between the Canon IPF Pro 2000 and the Epson Sure Color P7000. The 7000 is their 24 inch roll printer. The P5000 is not 24 inch, it's 17 inch. It's just an updated version of the 4900. So, right there, as soon as I realized that, right there, that just eliminated that as the choice. And I am pretty about 90% going for the 2000 from Canon. So in this video, they had the two printers sitting there side by side. They sent jobs to it. And in all categories, the Canon printer basically beat the Epson from the time it took to spool to the time the printer began to print. So then I started, okay, well, you know, this is fine and dandy, but there's got to be other features that would cause me to spend a little bit more money for that particular printer as opposed to the Epson one. So one thing that actually really sealed the deal for me was this. Again, it's got an internal desnetometer. I am not entirely sure, and please you guys tell me if you know whether the 2000 has a internal hard drive. A lot of the higher level IPF printers do have an internal hard drive, which will save all sorts of calibration settings and actually even images that you can then print directly from your LCD. That way you remove the computer out of the equation when you're actually doing testing of the printer itself. So one feature that is just a killer, dual roll support. You can load two sizes of rolls or you can use a secondary roll to act as a take up spool for the main roll material that you are using. Wow! Again, you will not have paper running. If you're doing banner mode type printing, one print after the other, you will not have, you know, 50 feet of paper on your studio floor. So I love that part of, about that. Apparently, paper loading or roll loading is a lot simpler on the Pro 2000 than on the P, say, 5000 or 7000. Not as finicky. So that, again, is a good thing. We have 12 cartridges to deal with. There is Chroma Optimizer. That, that you know, sells it for me already. I've had experience already with three printers using Chroma Optimizer, and it is great. The Epson has orange and I think red also. And that helps around that range of tones. What happens often is that Instead of mixing yellow and magenta to make orange, as soon as you reach that particular level of orange, the orange ink begins to be used. 
And of course, as you get closer to the reds, then the red ink is triggered to use, and that creates a very wide gamut in that region of the spectrum. You're using pure colors rather than mixing yellow and magenta. Now, on the Pro 1 and the higher level, we have red as well, and it is a special red. It is a red that third-party providers have not been able to crack completely. It is a fantastic red. And so your results in that region are fantastic. Can't beat it. The Pro 1000, Pro 2000 and higher also uses blue. And that helps tremendously. And I've demonstrated these ridiculous blues that I've been able to get that the Pro 1 cannot get. Okay. So that is all fine and dandy. Now, one thing, the Epson printers, when a cartridge runs empty, that means it is declared empty, your printer stops printing. Some printers allow you to replace that cartridge and continue printing. But you have to stop what you're doing, you have to go through the motions. And in some printers requires quite a few steps to actually open that ink compartment, remove that cartridge and insert a new one. And then, you know, you have to tell it to accept it and continue printing and so on. Some cases you just cannot print. You have to start all over again. The Canon Pro 1000 and higher, I believe this one allows you to do that. You can replace a empty cartridge on the fly while the printer is still printing. And that is because of the secondary large containers or reservoirs of ink that live internally in the printer. There is way enough ink in there to allow you to continue printing. You get a bit of time for you to prepare your next cartridge. You open up, replace, and pop it back in, close the lid, and continue printing, never stopping. Another Pro 1000, you absolutely can do that. I have not tested that because I don't have an empty cart yet. So we will see. I'll test that with that as well. And that was the, the deal ceiling feature for me. One of the many actually, but that really uh, impressed me. And so again, of course, you also have the ability on the Pro 2000 and up to download special configuration files from companies that sell third-party papers. They give you the profile and they also give you the configuration file, which you can then store in the printer itself. And so that includes everything. That includes all the parameters. So now you don't have to choose a generic paper type like Luster, like Lossy. You actually have an actual configuration paper type in your printer. So that's going to be great. And uh, again, at the rate that we are going, I should be able to reach that probably maybe by Christmas time, I hope, and catch a good Christmas sale on a Pro 2000. We'll see. All right, that is it. I did not really delve too much into any other details. I just very basically glossed over. I looked at it and I uh, read both reviews from Keith Cooper of Outback and yeah that's it the Canon Pro 2000 is the winner all right if you guys got any comments any suggestions please let me know below as always and I'll be here to answer them or at least get into a slight argument if it requires that I hope that I don't make anybody mad for choosing one printer over another I think this is the best way to go and of course as you heard in my previous video really there's no big future for these uh Epson sure color printers. They're just, you know, not going to be anything that is going to be too easy to use. So far for this one, it's going to be a piece of cake. And I hope the Pro 2000 proves to be the same. And so hopefully they will be providing the world with some uh, single use chips for that as well. I suspect that the cartridges use the same system for the valve body and also as easy to refill as these will be. Before I go, I want to show you what a 
IPF 5000 cartridge looks like. So basically the body looks identical to the 1000 body. The valve is drastically different. I took the front cap off and the chip holder. Chip holder is identical to these. But the valve body is totally different. There are two stems on it. And so I'm going to just cut this off with a blade and just harvest the ink. This ink should work quite well on printers such as the Canon 9500. I'm not going to try it on my Pro 10. I don't know whether the physical characteristics are compatible with the Pro 10, but I know they will work just fine on a 9500. Especially the generic colors, your blacks, your grays, your you know red and yellows and, and so on. So that is it. Thank you so much again. Please subscribe as always. Share with the world, everyone. And like, watch the whole video, please. Give me those minutes watch. That's what they are looking at now. Very important. So I appreciate if you can sit and watch the whole video and try not to skip too much because that really destroys the so-called metric that YouTube is looking at now and that is watch time. So thank you again. Happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.